from one of the biggest gold mines on Earth, located in the middle of Uzbekistan, and a massive copper operation in Chile that sits 10,000 feet above sea level in the Atacama Desert, to the world's largest iron mine in Brazil that was discovered entirely by accident, and an unbelievable diamond mine in Russia that was built right next to a city. Here are the 10 biggest mining operations in the world. The year was 1936. A Dutch geologist named John Dozy was climbing the world's tallest island peak, the snow-capped Mount Karstens on the Indonesian island of West Papua. As he neared the top, he noticed a strange rock formation in the distance. The green streaks stole his attention. He brought samples back home for testing. Little did he know, he had stumbled upon a massive deposit of gold and copper. The Grasberg Gold and Copper Mine houses the largest known gold reserve on Earth. Some say it's the second largest copper reserve in the world, others say it's the third. Either way, there is a lot of gold and copper down there. The pit is about 60 miles north of Tamika, a small town in central Papua. And though it was discovered in 1936, mining didn't begin until the 1970s. Today, Grasberg is controlled by an American company called Freeport McMoran. They've been there since the beginning, but thought they mined the site dry in the mid-1980s. After some careful exploring in 1988, the company found more gold deposits in the area. That's when they started printing money. Between 1990 and 2019, Grasberg produced 53 million ounces of gold and 432 billion ounces of copper. That's equal to over 1,600 tons of gold. All that production makes Grasberg Indonesia's biggest taxpayer. They believe the reserves are easily worth $100 billion in revenue. The world's undisputed primary source of copper is the Escondida Mine in Chile. It's located in the Atacama Desert and makes up a massive portion of the Chilean GDP. They are the world's leading producer of copper, accounting for 32% of all production. They're just lucky they found the mine. Escondida means hidden in Spanish. The copper ore was buried under thousands of feet of rock and mountain. They had to drill through other known copper deposits just to find it. Getting there presented another challenge. The Escondida mine sits about 10,000 feet above sea level in the Atacama Desert. It's also not your typical mining pit. The copper deposits stretch 11 miles north to south and 2 miles east to west. Production began in the 1990s. But unless they find another miracle deposit, the mine should only last into the 2030s. The mine's primary owner, BHP Billiton, is a little more optimistic. In 2012, they estimated the mine had another 100 years of production left in her. They're also pretty happy with recent production numbers. In the first half of 2022, the mine produced 824.4 kilotons of copper. That was up 12% compared to 2021. They're also making big moves on the sustainability front. According to BHP, the mine will soon run on 100% renewable energy. They did have to spend a pretty penny to cancel their coal contracts, about $1.1 billion. However, moving to renewables should displace 3 million tons of CO2 per year. That's equal to 700,000 combustion engine cars. Imagine a single road that stretched all the way from New York City to Las Vegas, Nevada. Now bend that road like a slithering snake and bury it below the Andes Mountains in Chile. What you'd have is the El Teniente Copper Mine, the largest underground mine in the world. But aren't all mines underground? Well, not necessarily. Most mines are open pit, meaning they're just a giant hole in the ground. You can't really dig holes in the Andes Mountains, but you can dig tunnels. About 1,900 miles worth of tunnels. We've been digging those tunnels since 1819. Legend has it that a fugitive Spaniard stumbled upon the copper deposits and started hauling them out by mule and donkey. In the early 1900s, two American men built a road to make moving the ore much easier. The mine was owned by a Utah company until 1967. Then the Chilean government bought it. 
In 1971, Chilean President Salvador Allende nationalized the copper industry. All Chilean copper now flows through one state-owned company, Codelco. Copper production hit a six-year low in 2015. To compensate, Codelco opened another mine within the El Teniente division. They predicted the new expansion would produce 50,000 tons of copper each year. They also started another expansion that would deepen the mine by about 328 feet. The new mine level project costs about $5.4 billion, but should extend the mine's life another 50 years. The Atacama Desert in northern Chile is an arid landscape with little vegetation. However, it has plenty of raw minerals hidden underground. In 2021, the mining sector contributed $317 billion to Chile's GDP. That's about 15% of all the money they make. Much of it likely came from the Chuquicamata Copper Mine, the largest open-pit copper mine in the world. It's also the second deepest. At 3,200 feet deep, 9,500 feet wide, and 16,000 feet long, all of New York's Central Park could fit inside. Current operations at Chuquicamata have been the same since 1910, but people had been mining copper long before. The Inca and Spanish conquistadors used the mine to make tools and weapons. Then, in 1899, someone found a well-preserved mummy buried deep in the mine. He became known as Copper Man, and his remains date back to 550 AD. Now, if we've been mining Chuquicamata since the 6th century, wouldn't it be empty by now? Well, they believe there's still 1.76 billion tons of copper down there. That's why, in 2007, the Chilean government suggested digging tunnels under the mine. They finalized the plans in 2009, and the environmental agencies granted approval in 2010. By 2060, the mine should be nearly 2,600 feet deeper. It'll also cost the government about $4.2 billion to dig. Of course, they'll make that back overnight with all the copper they find. The new tunnels should produce 140,000 tons of ore per day. In the summer of 1955, a group of Soviet geologists were trekking through Siberia when they encountered a pleasant surprise. They discovered traces of a rare volcanic rock called kimberlite. In case you aren't a geologist, kimberlite means diamonds. For their discovery, these men received the Lenin Prize, one of the highest honors in the USSR. The Russians began building ASAP. They quickly learned that digging a mine 280 miles away from the Arctic Circle isn't easy. The area experiences seven months of winter each year. The ground freezes, making it hard to penetrate. Then in the summer, it turns to slush, making it very unstable. It got so cold at times that engine oil would freeze and tires would shatter. Still, the Soviets persevered and Mir Mine was born. At the time, it was the largest diamond mine in Russia and one of the biggest in the world. By the 1960s, Mir was cranking out 10 million carats of diamonds each year. The more they dug, the more diamonds they found. By the 1990s, they had reached 1,120 feet deep. Then, a flood in the pit bottom halted production. The mine changed hands several times after the Soviet Union collapsed. When production finally stopped in 2004, Mir Mine was the second largest excavated hole on Earth. It was so big that you weren't allowed to fly over it. There was a chance the downward airflow could suck helicopters in like a vacuum. Mir reopened in 2009 and should last another 50 years. It's currently owned by Al Rosa, the world's largest diamond miner by volume. They employ about 70% of the local community about 35,000 people. Orapa, Botswana is home to about 9,000 people, four schools, and the world's largest diamond mine. The mine covers a 0.46 square mile area. That's about 300 acres of land. For the record, the White House only sits on 18 acres of land. The Orapa Mine is owned and operated by Botswana Diamond Company in partnership with De Beers Diamond Co. A team of De Beers geologists discovered the mine in March of 1967. 
Conveniently, it was only a year after Botswana declared independence from Britain. In its first year, Orapa produced over 1.4 million carats of diamonds. It only went up from there. They operate seven days a week and produce over 20 million tons of ore. From that ore, they pull about 10.8 million carats of diamonds each year. Botswana's entire economy relies on the Orapa mine. Thanks to all those diamonds, they evolved from an impoverished nation to a thriving middle-income country. According to the International Monetary Fund, transparency is the name of the game. Where other countries might get greedy, Botswana's government reinvests in its people. Most of the diamond revenue goes towards health, education, social assistance, and public infrastructure. They're also ranked 35th among countries regarding corruption. For the record, the United States is 24th, Denmark is number one, and Somalia is dead last. When we think of giant mines, we like to picture silver, gold, and plenty of diamonds. But the world still needs iron, too. And we get most of it from the Carajás Iron Mine in Para, Brazil. The mine is fully owned by a Brazilian mining company called Vale. According to their estimates, about 7.2 billion tons of iron ore are waiting for them. Carajás is the world's largest iron mine, but it wasn't discovered until 1967. Even then, they found it completely by accident. A team of geologists from U.S. Steel was flying over the Amazon rainforest when they had to make an emergency landing to refuel. They landed their helicopter on a hill that seemed rather odd. It was barren, too barren for something in a remote corner of the rainforest. They tested the ground, and lo and behold, it was basically made of iron. They also discovered manganese, tin, copper, aluminum, and gold. But iron was still the real prize. The United States said, we found it, so it's ours. The Brazilian government didn't want to hear it. They made a deal to split the mine in 1970. Vale took 51% ownership. U.S. Steel took the other 49%. Then, U.S. Steel sold their half in 1977. So now the mine is fully controlled by Brazil. Today, Brazil produces the second most iron in the world. Australia is number one, accounting for 35% of global iron ore production. Western Australia is home to Greenbush's Mine, the largest lithium mine in the world. Our lives run on lithium. Look at all the rechargeable items in your room. From your laptop and your phone to your gaming consoles and Bluetooth headphones, they all likely run on lithium-ion batteries. There's a good chance your lithium came from Greenbush's Australia. They produce about 1.95 million tons of lithium every year. For the record, your average cell phone has less than a gram of lithium. The mining project is split between two companies. A Chinese company called Tianqi Lithium Industries owns a 51% stake. The other 49% is owned by an American company, Albemarle Corp. Both stand to make insane amounts of money as lithium demand keeps rising. According to reports, global lithium demand should grow by 33.3% every year. To keep pace with demand, the Greenbush's mine is currently going through an expansion process. They hope to build two more processing facilities to produce more battery juice than ever before. Today, the Greenbush's open pit operation is about 870 feet deep. They've been digging since 1888, when the area was mostly mined for tin. The lithium-ion battery wouldn't be invented for another 88 years. We have a British chemist named Michael Whittingham to thank for that. If you're watching this video on your smartphone or laptop, say thank you, Michael Whittingham. They first discovered lithium at Greenbushes in 1980. They had no idea how valuable it was at the time. To them, it was just a soft geological oddity. They began a small-scale mining operation in 1983. Then, production exploded in the 2000s as the push towards electric cars became more mainstream. As of 2021, Greenbushes accounts for over one-fifth of global lithium production. Plans to expand the mine are already in place. The $1.9 billion expansion will double the mine's size. We're talking 1.6 miles long, over a half mile wide, and about 1,500 feet deep.
If you zoom in on central Uzbekistan, you'll see a massive circular cavity surrounded by nothing but desert. You'll see trucks driving in and out like ants on a hill. Each one is full of humankind's most precious metal, gold. You would be looking at the Murantau Gold Mine, one of the largest gold operations on Earth. According to NASA, the Murantau Mine is home to one of the biggest gold deposits on Earth. Today, it stretches 1.8 miles across the Kizilkum Desert and over 2,000 feet into the ground. In 2021, the mine spat out 3 million ounces of gold. That's 187,500 pounds, or about 7.5 fully loaded school buses. The gold deposit was first discovered in 1958. Before that, the Murantau mine was a main source of turquoise, dating back to the ancient Silk Road. Geologists believe it took millions of years for the gold in Murantau to rise to the surface. During that time, ancient oceans closed and disappeared, mountains sprouted from the earth, and tectonic shifts changed our planet forever. Today, the Murantau mine is owned and operated by Navoy Mining and Metallurgical Combinat, a state-run company. They've invested millions, if not billions, of dollars into growing the mine over time. As of 2023, Murantau is in its Stage 5 development phase. By 2026, Navoy hopes to produce 50 million tons of ore per year. But remember, that doesn't mean 50 million tons of gold. The Bingham Canyon Mine near Salt Lake City, Utah is the largest artificial excavation site in the world. Covering an area of 4.7 square miles, it's one of the few man-made objects you can see from space. Other sites include the Three Gorges Dam and the Palm Jumeirah in Dubai. The Canyon Mine is also the deepest open pit mine on Earth at three quarters of a mile deep. They say it's produced more copper than any other mine in history about 17 million tons. Bingham Canyon has been in operation since 1906. It was discovered in 1848 by two Mormon brothers, Sanford and Tom Bingham. They reported their findings to Brigham Young, the then president of the LDS Church. He basically told them it wasn't worth it, so Sanford and Tom didn't stake their claim. Another Utah mining company came by in the 1860s, and the rest is history. Today, it's owned by Rio Tinto, an Anglo-Australian company. Meanwhile, the Kennecott Utah Copper Co. manages all mining operations. That's why some locals call it the Kennecott Copper Mine instead of Bingham Canyon. It accounts for more than 16% of copper produced in the United States. They also dabble in gold, silver, and molybdenum, a mineral used in steel alloys. In April of 2016, a massive rock slide shuttered production at the Bingham County Mine. According to reports, 165 million tons of rock slid to the bottom of the pit. Thankfully, nobody was in the mine when the landslide occurred. Well, that's all we have for you today. But if you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next time.